Welcome to the BBW show, you feel me? We talk battle rap, basketball, and wrestling on a daily basis. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. The topic for today is Rey Mysterio. Yes, yes, yes. Rey Mysterio just went out with another knee injury, you feel me? Crazy, crazy. Just had surgery a few days ago. All well wishes to Rey Mysterio. Now, they just did this um, Santos Escobar turn on him angle, which I feel like was the perfect time to do it. They just brought Carlito back. Carlito was like the like the middle man to make Santos Escobar turn hill. Now, I feel like we're going to get Santos Escobar versus Carlito until Rey Mysterio come back. And then I can see Rey Mysterio coming back around probably Royal Rumble. Probably Royal Rumble. You feel me? But this is good. I'm not going to lie. This is good. This is good. Santos Escobar was not getting that much over as a babyface. I'm not. When he was in there by himself without Rey Mysterio, the people did not care. The crowd did not care about him. You feel me? So him being a heel is going to be good. And then we got the, like, the question is, what does the other LWO members do? Does Alina Vega turn a heel too? Does Cruz Del Toro and Joaquin Wilde turn heel too? Because they was already with them at Legado del Fantasma. So it's a lot. I ain't gonna lie. This is a lot. This is a lot. And we're gonna get Santos Escobar versus Rey Mysterio in a feud. It can lead to WrestleMania. Last year we got Rey versus Dominic. Imagine if this year WrestleMania we get Rey versus Santos Escobar. That'd be dope. You feel me? That'd be dope. But it definitely makes sense why they had Logan Paul beat him. And why they had Santos Escobar do this injury angle on like... Not with no, it was teases, but it was nothing that was definitive. It all happened so fast, you feel me? Also, on SmackDown, they had Asuka turn heel, you feel me, and join Damage Control. This is going to set up a women's war games. I didn't think we was going to get a women's war games because it didn't feel like it was no major storyline with the women. It hasn't, you feel me? In fact, they was just doing a bunch of multi women matches on Raw and SmackDown. It was no direct storyline. Now I guess we're going to get damage control of Bailey, Asuka, Kyrie Sane, and EO Sky versus Charlotte, Bianca Belair, Shotzi, and somebody else. I hope the last person is Liv Morgan because she's been out for a while, but I don't know if she's cleared to come back. Um, Dakota Kai is still injured. She hasn't done nothing physical. She's just on TV. But having damage control as a five-person group, a five-woman group, that's kind of... Interesting. I'm not gonna lie, it's kinda interesting. It can lead to Bailey turning babyface, but I thought this whole thing was for Bailey to be the heel and EO Sky to be the babyface. If they all kick out Bailey, they don't have a mouthpiece. Oscar's not a promo, EO Sky's not a promo, Kyrie Sane's not a promo. So if you kick all if you kick out Bailey and have them in there by themselves, yeah that would be good television, but who's gonna be the talker? Who's gonna be the talker? So I feel like they can stretch this out for a little minute and have damage control really run SmackDown. They can have them do that. Same way the Bloodline was doing. Same way Judgment Day was doing on Raw. They have enough women where they can fight. And then eventually, we can still get Charlotte Flair versus Bianca Belair at WrestleMania one-on-one. -on -one. We still need that match one-on-one -on -one too. You feel me? Charlotte Flair is a baby face right now, but she's, uh, she's not lighting the world on fire, if I'm being honest. If I'm being honest, she's not lighting the world on fire. But I don't know if we're going to get Liv Morgan or Becky Lynch. It was reports coming out that Becky Lynch might be the fourth woman for Team Babyface at War Games. I don't know. I would be interested in that. And last but not least, Drew McIntyre finally turned tail. I love this. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. A lot of people seen this coming for a long time. For the last few weeks, they've been building this up. He lost to Seth Rollins. Wasn't on road a week the night after. It made sense for him to turn heel. And now he, I don't know if he joined the Judgment Day or they have a little alliance. They can stretch this out. I'm not going to lie. They can stretch this out with Drew McIntyre in the Judgment Day. They can have Damian Priest cash in, win the title, and then have Judgment Day turn on Damian Priest. You feel me? Like they can be, they can do a lot with this. They can do a lot with this. Because it's obvious they want Damian Priest to be the breakout star. That's obvious. You feel me? So if Drew McIntyre stays in the Judgment Day and becomes an honorary member, and then they got J.D. McDonough, Dominic, Finn Balor, I feel like that would make Judgment Day a totally different group. Totally different. Totally different. But there's no need to rush it. There's no need to rush it. That's like 
five months down the line, six months down the line. Immediately, I see Drew McIntyre being in War Games, and I see this confirming the return of Randy Orton. Yes, Randy Orton is coming back at Survivor Series. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. It makes all the sense in the world. Judgment Day now has five people. Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton got history. Seth Rollins and Randy Orton got history. It's Survivor Series. Randy Orton has the best winning record at Survivor Series. It's in Chicago. So if we don't get CM Punk, but get Randy Orton, the crowd is going to go ballistic. Ballistic. And I wouldn't announce him until the day of the show. To the day of the show, I will have Randy Orton come out. My iconic entrance music. I hear voices inside my head. They talk to me. They un you hear me? Monster pop. Monster pop. And then that can lead to Randy Orton versus The Judgment Day. And that can give us Drew McIntyre versus Cody Rhodes. I feel like that's a nice dream feud. We can get three great matches out of Drew McIntyre versus Cody Rhodes one-on-one. -on -one. Same way we got Cody versus Brock. Drew McIntyre versus Cody Rhodes has a lot of story to it. They both was former tag team champions. They both left WWE and then came back. They both were former Royal Rumble winners. It makes all the sense in the world to do a Drew McIntyre versus Cody Rhodes feud. Not even one-off, a feud. They can carry this until the Royal Rumble after War Games. You feel me? So we had three massive heel turns in the span of what, five days? Five days, three massive heel turns. Santos Escobar, Oscar, and Drew McIntyre. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's kind of interesting. It's definitely interesting. Warrior Rumble season coming up. It's time for WWE to get their shit going. Let's get it. That's my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I'll be back with more.